Midwest emo slash math rock, everyone's favorite music genre, especially those who wear these type of outfits. I'm sure you guys can relate, but I've always found that this genre of music has always been pretty much impossible to play at my guitar level. But after stumbling across this video by Daijiro Senpai, I've analyzed his hands and finger movements, and that changed my life forever. Midwest emo slash math rock became a genre that was once impossible for me to play to something that I can just noodle along with. So in today's video, I'll be showing you guys the basics of how you can also noodle along like this. Alright, let's get started. First of all, I'll be showing you some stuff that you're gonna need. So obviously you want a guitar and also a capo. For this tutorial, I'll be using my audio interface. So let me plug in my guitar. So I'll be working with a relatively clean compressed tone. And if you want to emulate something similar, I recommend watching this video by Let's Learn Math Rock. I was too broke to buy any pedals, so I just did exactly what he did, but virtually. Okay, step 2. Midwest Emo slash Math Rock Music Theory Okay, if you haven't watched my JRPG Music Theory video yet, I'll do a quick recap. For those of you who don't know how chords are being noted, basically the capital letter means major and the small letter means minor. The number that it is representing shows where the root note of the chord actually is. Let's say we are in the key of C major and we want to talk about F major chord. F is the fourth note in the C major scale and because it's a capitalized letter, therefore it is an F major, not an F minor. Okay, let's continue on. So Midwest emo songs generally follow kind of the same chord progressions as a contemporary Japanese song. Okay, for example, let's say the 4-5-6 progression. This is a really commonly used Japanese chord progression that you can also use in the context of Midwest Emo. Okay, while editing, I realize that some it may be a bit confusing to some people, but I'm all I'm doing is I'm just playing the bass note, like, like literally just a single note. Yeah. So instead of let's say if you're playing like an F major, instead of playing the whole F major, you just play the bass note, which is just F. Okay, you might be wondering right now, like, aren't Midwest emo songs like all using some jazz chords? Well, yes, but the bass notes remain the same. All those complex stuff and colorful stuff that you see are basically just normal basic chords wearing fancy clothes. But what we want is the chord from the heart. Okay, with the music theory basics out of the way, now you might be wondering why are we gonna be using this capo? So let me give you an example. Alright, so you know how in anime they use like the 4536 kinda chord progression? No, 4536. So basically what you want to use the capo for is you wanna put the capo at the number three, right? So when you strum the guitar without pressing anything, it should be the number three. So, okay, let's say we want to use this 4536. So, 453. This is the 3, right? So, you want to put your capo at number 3. So, just put it like this. Oh, it's a bit tight. Okay, there we go. So, when you don't press anything, like on, when your left hand doesn't press anything, it should be number 3. So, when you play the thing, There we go, that's, that's, that's where you put a capo. All right, <laughs> back to the video. Okay, so what I want you to do now is for you to practice playing the bass notes. And yeah, that is step one, done. How to noodle. 
Okay, just now I just taught you how to play the bass notes, right? But you're not just going to be playing bass notes, you're also going to be playing a melody on top of it. Unfortunately, there is no easy way to do this, but what I recommend doing is to learn the pentatonic scale. Alright, so we're going to be taking a look at the pentatonic scale. So, I've got my capo on the 4th fret right here, and yeah, let's get started. So, the pentatonic scale is actually pretty easy. All you have to do is, you just have to follow the graph. So if you follow the graph, you should be able to make this kind of sound. Backwards. So basically, with the shape that you just learned, we're going to be using that shape and we're going to be making a melody. Alright, so remember the shape, so instead of playing it like this, we're going to tap the notes instead, so it's going to be... Yeah, something like that. So you might be wondering, where do I actually put this shape? Remember the 4, 5, 3, 6 thing that we learned? You want to be putting the pentatonic scale at the 6. So 4, 5, 3, 6. And this is where the pentatonic scale starts. So, let's say on my left hand I've got the bass note, alright? So on my right hand, I can tap the notes that are highlighted on the chart. Okay, but we're not done yet because in a lot of Midwest emo and math rock stuff, people slide a lot. So make sure you use a combination of tapping, sliding, and uh, yeah, those two especially. Something like that, so yeah, you gotta use a combination of tabs as well as slides. Okay, but what if you're bored of the pentatonic scale? Because there's, all, there's only so much you can do with the pentatonic scale. What I recommend doing is changing the pentatonic into a major scale, and it's actually pretty simple. So remember the shape just now? All you gotta do is you just gotta add these notes on screen right now. So if you add those notes, it will automatically change your pentatonic to a major and it will give you so many more melodies that you can try out. So for example, So if you're getting bored of only using this number one shape, just remember that you, you know you can go higher up in the fretboard and try out these other shapes, but that means that you've got more stuff to remember. But trust me, it is worth it. And just like that, we've learned how to play the bass notes of a Midwest emo song, and also how to play the melody as well, and how to tap and slide, and so on. And now, it's the last step, which a lot of people give up on. Practice. So here's a semi-accurate demonstration of what your progress will probably look like if you practice every single day. So, using everything that we've learned today, me and a good friend of mine, Jess Cripson, made a short song that has like the midwest emo kind of vibe all right welcome to ableton it's been a very long time since i've done one of these welcome to ableton's but uh let's quickly just get through it because there's very little stuff actually so we've got our guitar here pretty basic stuff we got a bass so for the bass i'm actually using a plugin called Ample Bass and it's 100% free so you can go download it. Here is the lead sound. And then here's like a reverse sound. And then here's the drum. So the drums I use is from uh, Labs, Spitfire Labs and it's 100% free as well. So you can go and download it.
Other than that, I just added like a synthesizer here. Yeah, it's like a very indie kind of vibe, I guess. And then we got some, some random uh, ambient stuff. I've also processed Just Cripson's vocals a little bit. Oh yeah, um, a short shout out to Just Cripson. So Just Cripson makes videos about audio gear, audio related stuff, and also video related stuff. So if you're you know interested in those kind of topics, then be sure to check him out. Okay, let's play the final song. Something I won't repeat This is for you Memories don't say that I'm very aware we face Now you go without a phrase Autonomous but lost a taste And now I've lost all my pace And now I've lost all Autonomous will lost a taste But now you go without a phrase These seeds will all place Oh wow, I didn't see you there. Uh, can you please introduce yourself? Um, hi there, uh, my name is Iman, a friend of Class Shift, and today I'm going to give you my little tips or guide on Midwest Emo. Hmm, interesting, interesting. So, what are the tips that you have for beginners? Alright, so if you want to uh, try writing Midwest Emo riffs, um, here are some tips that you can try. So, first of all, Find a sound or style that you want to try playing by listening to the bands that you want to sound like or, you know, just listen to your favorite Midwest emo band. Um, learn a couple of their riffs and from there, try to noodle around. I'm pretty sure most of the Midwest emo riffs that you find on YouTube are pretty much people just grabbing the guitar, noodling around until they find something nice. Well, at least that's how I do it. Wow. So, yeah. You can also explore open tunings like FACGCE or DAD F sharp AE. Using open tunings are like entering cheat codes when playing a video game. <laughs> they can help you a lot and you can easily get that bright twinkling emo sound by just playing hammer-ons and slides randomly. Just go crazy and let your creativity flow because whatever that you've learned in standard tuning may not quite apply to these open tunings. So mm. it's like relearning how to play the guitar all over again. And to me, that's what makes open tunings really fun. And uh, my personal favorite tuning is DAEA C sharp E. That is a lot of information, but those are all really amazing tips. Thank you so right, much. Right. No so, problem. what are the bands that you recommend for people who are new to this genre to listen to? So now if you're just getting started and you don't know what Midwest emo bands to listen to, here are some recommendations. Now I know it might get confusing at first as Midwest emo is pretty huge and there are a ton of Midwest emo styles or sounds. You have the modern day sounding Midwest emo stuff that often has traces of pop punk influences into it. For me, modern day Midwest emo is sort of like pop punk but much more technical in terms of riffing and stuff so 
If you're interested in this type of Midwest emo sounding style, you can check out Tiny Moving Parts' um, much more recent stuff, albums like Breathe and Swell. There are, there are older al albums, however, like Pleasant Living and This Couch's Long and Full of Friendship, has much more of that old school Midwest emo style where traces of screamo and somewhat of a post hardcore influence uh, can be found. So now if you're more interested into that style of Midwest emo, I usually like to call it the twinkling emo screamo sound, um, you can check out bands like Cap and Jazz and Algernon Catwalder for starters. There's also another style of Midwest emo and this one has traces of math rock influences to it. Whoa. If you're interested in this sort of playing style, um, you know, something more technical and challenging with all those fancy odd time signatures and stuff, you can check out bands like American Football and This Town Needs Guns or TTNG for short. Now, there are a whole lot more bands out there and you should definitely do some digging yourself because the bands that I've recommended doesn't even scratch the surface. You have Midwest emo bands from all over the world, Japan, and Singapore, Indonesia, Malaysia, heck, even Russia. I recommend <laughs> if you have some free time, check out Mid Midwest Emo playlists on Spotify and also Bandcamp, because that's where all the hidden gems are, especially Bandcamp. Definitely check out Bandcamp. Just search up Midwest Emo and boom, a whole catalog of bands will appear. Wow. Uh, how about you? Like, what, 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 what kind of stuff are you into personally? Um, I'm personally more into that, um, you know, twinkling emo screamo sound mm -hmm. so yeah i like i like that i like that type of stuff oh wow you seem to know a lot about this topic are you yourself a, a midwest emo person i mean i i listen to midwest emo before i sleep and when i wake up during my morning showers i listen to midwest emo it's usually midwest emo 24 7 for me Oh, wow. And also for now, I'm actually currently working on having a Midwest emo band myself. So, Ooh. yeah, that's that. Interesting, interesting. Um, do you do you have any uh, information to share about that? Um, well, it's still in the works. So I guess you can sort of follow my social media accounts, um, on Instagram and Twitter. My handle is at sungai underscore klang. So um, that's that. So if you want to like, you know, uh, follow me for updates about the mm -hmm. band or some st stuff like that. But yeah, it's still um, a work in progress. Thank you so much for giving us all sorts of interesting insight on Midwest Emo. All right, no problem, dude. So um, guys, if, if you like Midwest Emo stuff, be sure to check out Emo and Kalis's band when it comes out. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> Definitely, definitely. And uh, follow him on Instagram, as he said. Uh, he, he, here is, is the tag. Alright, uh, thank you very much. And um, I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. <laughs> Alright, bye-bye. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> I would like to congratulate you for watching this video until the... Oh. Oh. Because this video took me a very long time to make. So, thank you very much. Anyway, um, I was going to say... Shout out to Wish to Win Polkadot, but unfortunately, my running a, a Patreon does take a lot of work, so that's why I decided to stop my Patreon. So, but if you want to support me though, I still do have my Buy Me a Coffee link, and um, yeah, it'll be right there. I would like to give a shout out to BBL, Wish to, and Polkadot, of course, <laughs> for um, helping me to find a lot of my stuff like Ableton my monitor and so on so big shout out to you guys but um, unfortunately I will have to end the patreon because I, I cannot handle you know too, too much stuff going on again I would like to give a big big thank you to Just Cripson for uh, his vocals and also Iman Kalis for sharing his uh, Midwest emo experience so thank you very much guys as usual be sure to like the video subscribe and uh, if you're, you know, you like this kind of stuff, you know the drill, man. Uh, join the Discord server. Links in the description below. Uh, here's a quote from Leona Wieselbonk. Okay, this is not my quote, by the way, because, you know, I did not want to get sued. But we are expect people to be negative, but we are decide to be positive. Thank you. All right, I think that is all. Um, yeah, okay. Um, I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Oh, Johnny.